in once again. This is Clemens, and I'm broadcasting live from Ivano Frankiv city in Ukraine. I'm back again, and um, I want to know if anybody can see me now. If anybody got notification, could you join me again? Let's see who's going to join us. And um, I want to hope that this time around that the audio is okay now. So who's going to join me first again? You're all welcome to this live broadcast. Can anybody hear me? Who will be the first to join today? Who will be the first to join today? We are discussing a topic today that is titled Stop Being a Slave Child. Stop Being a Slave Child. My wife just joined and I want to know if there is someone else who will be joining tonight. I'm going to wait for some other persons to come before I continue, before I start the discussion for tonight. Some people were here earlier. I hope they would come back again. So who do we have joining me tonight? And um, thank you for sharing the video. Uh, my wife, God bless you. Thank you for sharing the video and for inviting your friends. So let's see who else will join us tonight as we discuss the topic that is titled Stop Being a Slave Child. Stop Being a Slave Child. Okay, so, so my wife can hear me very well. Who else is going to join me today? Who else is going to join me today? Hello, 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 hello. Can I see anybody? Can I see anybody joining me tonight? Hello, who else is coming? Who else is coming? Who else is coming? Who else is coming before I start the topic? I can't see anybody. Can anybody hear me tonight? Can anybody hear me tonight? Just get your Bibles close. Get your Bibles close to you. When I call any scripture, any Bible verse, 
somebody can help me copy that verse and then put it on the comment box okay and um, that's if you have internet Bible but if you have hard copy of your Bible just hold it close and as I mentioned the verses we're going to be reading you will just open and then we will read and um, if you have any translation of the Bible just get them closed as many translations as you have because um, I want God's Word to be as clear as possible to as simple as possible to understand tonight yesterday I talked about cast out the bond woman and her son cast out the bond woman and her son and today I'm going to be talking about stop being a slave child stop being a slave child yesterday it was about casting out this slave woman and her son and today I'm talking about being a slave child but I can't see anybody apart from who else is going to join me did anybody get notification before I continue to know if anybody got notification okay I can't see anybody okay I Luigi Stephanie just joined. Uh, Akweji Stephanie, I'm glad to from that's my, she used to be my head girl in secondary school, that the, the female senior prefect. God bless you. Thank you for coming. I'm, I'm glad to have you on my platform. It's been, it's been a while. It's, it's over 10 years ago since we, we saw each other. You're welcome. So, can you hear me? Um, I Stephanie, can you hear me? Could you just write if you can hear me? Could you write if you can hear me, please? Before I continue, I want to be sure that everybody can hear me very well. Because if the audio is not good, I will have to switch to another device. So I want to be sure. Can somebody just attest to the fact that the audio is clear? Can anybody hear me? I want to know if anybody can hear me. Okay. Akpeji Stephanie said she can hear me. Okay, that's good. If you can hear me, then I can go ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, Akpeji Stephanie, you could do me the favor of um, helping me share the video just share the link so that your friends could see it and come join us tonight because I believe they will benefit from the topic we're looking at today. Now, today's topic is a continuation of yesterday's um, discussion. Yesterday, we looked at cast out the bond woman and her son. Cast out the slave woman and her son. And I said yesterday that the slave woman represents the law system. The slave woman represents the Ten Commandments. The slave woman represents everything that happened on Mount Sinai when Moses received the commandments. And the slave woman is a picture of Jerusalem, the earthly Jerusalem. 
And the Bible told us yesterday that Jerusalem is under bondage with all her children. And who are the children of the slave woman? They are those who are trying to obey the Ten Commandments and the Jewish laws so that they, they would be saved, so they would go to heaven by obeying the Jewish laws and the commandments. And we said that the bond woman, according to the Bible, need to be cast out. You know, where the system of laws and commandments and Ten Commandments and Jewish traditions needs to be cast out of our churches. Thank you for sharing the video, Stephanie. God bless you. Now, today, we are looking at stop being a slave child. And you may be wondering, who is a slave child? And why am I saying we should stop being slave children? Now, a slave child is anybody who is still obeying the Ten Commandments so he or she could please God. A slave child is anybody who is he trying to justify himself or herself by the Ten Commandments? The slave child is anybody who is trying to work so hard to follow the traditions of the Jews. A slave child is anybody who is trying to become righteous by himself. A child is anybody who does not believe that the cross and the blood of Jesus has given him eternal salvation. A slave child is anybody who is saying that Jesus Christ is not strong or powerful enough to save him. And so such a person is trying to save himself. Any of the people I mentioned now could be regarded as a slave child. And I want to say today that our churches all over the world are jam-packed with slave children. Most of the churches, over 90% of the churches on earth today are producing slave children. And the reason is because every now and again, what you hear them talk about is Ten Commandments, traditions, rules and regulations. And they tell us that until we obey the Ten Commandments, we cannot make heaven. Until we obey rules and regulation, then we are not born again. And so we have pastors, bishops, and reverends, popes, who are slave children. And they are giving birth to slave children. Anybody who is practicing religion, without faith in Christ Jesus, is a slave child. And I'm going to show you from the Bible. So I said earlier, you should get your Bibles closed. Get your Bibles closed and we're going to open them now. So I want us to look at the Bible. And then we would read from the book of Galatians. I want us to read Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. And we'll read from verse 4. To 7. Galatians chapter 4. From verse 4 to 7. Galatians chapter 4. From verse 4. 
to 7. Anybody who can copy that can copy it and you know paste as a comment on under the video. Galatians chapter 4 from verse 4 from verse 3 to 7 from verse 3 to 7 Galatians 4 from verse 3 to 7 So can anybody hear me A become boy deribo you are welcome good evening to you Please as you are coming in could you help me share the video and invite your friends I'm glad to have you on platform I'm glad to have you on the platform. You're welcome. So please, if anybody can copy the, the, the Bible verse. Yes, okay. Mrs. Stella, you can hear me. Good evening to you. Galatians chapter 4, verse 3 to 7. So I want somebody who can copy online. You can go to... Um, um, Go to the internet, just type Galatians chapter 4 and copy the quotation and put it there for everybody to see, for those who may not have physical Bibles close to them. So once that is done, we can read Galatians 4. I read from verse from verse 3. And if my wife can help me cut the link, that will be that will be okay. I will appreciate that. So Galatians 4. You can use any translation that you that you want. I have King James and I have the Living Bible. And I read from verse 3. And that is the way it was before Christ came. That is the way it was with us before Christ came. We were slaves to Jewish laws and rituals. For we thought they could save us. We were slaves to Jewish laws and rituals. For we thought they could save us. Apostle Paul is speaking here and he's saying that there was a time when the Jews were slaves to Jewish laws. Why were they slaves to Jewish laws? Because they thought that if they obeyed all the laws, they would be saved. And so they were slaves. I told you yesterday that anybody who is trying to obey Ten Commandments and Jewish laws so he would go to heaven, such a person is a slave child. Such a person is the child of the bond woman and i told you that the bond woman is hagar and hagar represents mount sinai and on mount sinai the commandments were given and the bible told us that anybody who is trying to live by the law system by the jewish commandments by the ten commandments who is trying to please god by the ten commandments that such a person is a slave and today the topic says stop being a slave child dr ocherry bismarck you are welcome stop being a slave child and where we read now apostle paul is saying that before christ came that they were slaves to the jewish laws and to the rituals and the traditions why? Because they thought that if they could obey all the commandments, then they would be saved. So they were expecting to get salvation by obeying the Ten Commandments. Now, that is not different from what we see in our churches today. That is not different from what churches all over the world. Over 90% of churches all over the world are still thinking that the way to salvation is to obey the Ten Commandments and the Jewish traditions and rituals. But Apostle Paul said, that was the way it was before Christ came. 
We were slaves to Jewish laws and rituals. For we thought they could save us. Now verse 4. But when the right time came, the time God decided on, he sent his son, born of a woman, born as a Jew, to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law. God had to send his own son, Jesus, to buy freedom for us who were slaves to Jewish laws. Now, if trying to obey the law made slave, and Jesus came and bought my freedom, how come our churches today are still telling us that we should be trying to obey Ten Commandments and trying to obey the Jewish laws? They are trying to make us slaves again. They are trying to imprison us again. To tie us down again with traditions and Jewish laws. They are trying to make us slave children again. No wonder all our churches are filled with slaves. All our churches are saturated, jam-packed with slaves. Because what we keep hearing in church is that if we don't obey the Ten Commandments, we are not going to heaven. If we don't obey the Jewish laws, then we are not born again, we are not saved. But Apostle Paul said that obeying the Jewish law makes you a slave. Trying to be justified by the law automatically makes you a slave. And thank God for God because he sent Jesus to come buy us freedom. What does it mean that he came to buy us freedom? He came to set us free from the law. He came to put an end to our slavery. But it is terrible to find out today that we have gone back to slavery. We have become slaves again. We are saying to Jesus, I don't need this freedom you are giving to me. I want to be a slave. We're taking for granted what Jesus did for us. Anytime you emphasize the Ten Commandments and the Jewish laws, and tell people that they need to obey commandments to be saved, you are enslaving them. You are putting them in prison again. You are giving birth to slave children. You are going to fornicate with the bond woman, Hagar, to give birth to Ishmael. Ishmael was a slave child. Don't, don't become like Ishmael. Don't go back every again. Because Jesus came to buy us freedom. So we have been set free from the Jewish laws. We have been set free from the Ten Commandments and the traditions of Moses. Everything that happened on Mount Sinai, we have been set free from Mount Sinai. No wonder the Bible says we have come unto Mount Zion. We have not come unto the mountain that burns with fire and brimstone. We have not come unto that mountain where the Ten Commandments was given. We, were not, we have not come into that mean of fear and slavery. We have come to Mount Zion. We have come to the heavenly Jerusalem. And the heavenly Jerusalem, I told you yesterday, is free. The heavenly Jerusalem is not under any kind of bondage. That is why you and I cannot enslave ourselves again. Anytime you go back to the commandment to be saved, to be sure that you will go to heaven, you enslave yourself again. Anytime you turn to the Jewish laws, you are taking for granted the freedom that Jesus bought for you with his blood. 
So we are no longer slaves. As we have seen in Galatians chapter 4, verse 3 to verse 7. Mrs. Rhoda, you are welcome again. To Chuku, good evening to you, you are welcome. So Galatians 4, verse 3 to 7. I'm going to read verse 5. To buy freedom for all who were slaves to the law. Why did he buy freedom for us? So that he could adopt us as his very own sons. So Jesus came to buy us freedom so that God could adopt us as his own children. We are the children of promise. We are the Isaac of God. We are born by promise. We are born according to the promise that God gave to Sarah. We are the heir of God. We are the ones who will inherit everything that God has. So don't become a slave again. Don't become a slave child. I came to say one thing to you today. That you have been set free from the, from the, from, from the slavish life. You have been set free from the servanthood kind of life. You have been set free from being a born woman and from being a born child. Why? Because Jesus came to buy us freedom. Now that he has bought us freedom, he didn't just buy us freedom. He bought us freedom and then adopted us as his own sons. So now I'm no longer an Ishmael. I am after the likeness of Isaac. And Isaac was a picture of Jesus who was to come. So I am after the likeness of Jesus. No wonder the Bible says that Jesus was the only begotten son of God. And then in Hebrew, the Bible says that he was the first begotten of God. So he is no longer the only begotten son of God. You and I have become sons of God. God has adopted us into his family. You cannot afford to become a slave again. You cannot afford to go back to the Jewish laws and traditions. Because if you go back to the Jewish laws and traditions, you are escaping from being a son of God to becoming a slave of the Jewish laws. You are running from God to becoming a slave child. You are simply saying to God, I don't want to be an heir of promise. I don't want to be the one who will inherit kingdom. I would rather be a slave child. So anytime you go to church and all they are telling you is that you need to obey 10 commandments and Jewish laws, they are trying to enslave you again. Because Apostle Paul said that anybody who is trying to live by the, by the commandments and the Jewish laws is a slave. So today I'm saying to you, stop being a slave child. You are now a prince of God. You are now a princess of God. We are now kings and queens. We cannot afford to go back to slavery. Now let's continue reading Galatians chapter 4, verse 6 now. And because we are his sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. So now we can rightly speak of God as our dear father. Now God is my father and God is your father. You have no business again with Ten Commandments. You have no business again with Jewish laws. You are no, no longer a slave. Stop living like a slave. Stop being a slave child. The Bible told us yesterday in Galatians that the child of the bond woman, the slave child, will not partake in the inheritance of the father. 
and so cast out the bond woman and her son. If you choose to be a slave child, you will be cast out. If you choose to become a slave, you will be cast out. The slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Because a son is the heir to the throne. So we are heirs of God. We are joint heirs with Christ. No wonder he's our elder brother. The Bible says, he that sanctifieth and they that are sanctified are all of one father. And so he is not ashamed to call us his brothers. So now we are sons of God. We are not slaves anymore. So stop being a slave child. But if you choose to be a slave child, you will be cast out. If you choose to take for granted the freedom that God has bought for you, and you say you don't want freedom, you want to be a slave to Jewish laws, then you will be cast out. Belema Alamina, good evening to you, doctor. You are welcome. Charles Emmanuel, good evening to you. You are welcome. Atido, Etido, you are welcome. I'm glad to have every one of you. Mrs. Ogenetega Adogbeji, you are welcome. Good evening to you. So we are looking at a topic that says, stop being a slave child. You are no longer a slave. So now God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. And now we can see God as our dear father. We can call him our father. Verse 7. Before I read verse 7, can you please help me share the video please share the video and invite your friends so more people there are a lot of slaves out there in the churches they need to listen to this they need to stop being slaves now i read verse 7 now we are no longer slaves apostle paul is saying now we are no longer slaves but god's own sons and since we are his sons, everything he has belongs to us. For that is the way God planned it. So everything God has belongs to us now. We are no longer slaves again. But it's a pity that our churches are turning people to slaves. Religion is giving birth to slaves every day. Our churches are filled with a lot of people who are slaves. Only very few people understand that Jesus has bought freedom for them already. Some are saying that even though Jesus has bought freedom for us, I still want to become a slave. I still want to go and obey the Ten Commandments. Can I tell you the truth? The Bible says that the child of the bond woman cannot re remain in the same house with the child of, the, of, 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 of Sarah. Isaac and Ishmael cannot remain in the same house. Ishmael has to be cast out. You cannot combine the Jewish laws with faith in Christ Jesus. Any attempt to live by the Jewish law a denial of your freedom in Christ Jesus. Any attempt to be justified by the Ten Commandments is to take for granted the blood of Christ on the cross. Is to despise the cross of Jesus. And to say that you don't want to be a son, but you would rather slave. And that is what I'm saying to you today. Don't allow some religious people make you slaves. Don't allow pastors and bishops make you slaves. They are making you slaves so they could control you. So they could oppress you. They could, you know, make you their, their servants. And anything they tell you to do, you do. But Jesus has bought freedom for us. We don't have any business with the Ten Commandments anymore. Now let's go to Galatians chapter 3 from verse 17 to 26. Galatians chapter 3 
from verse 17 to 26. Let's see what it says. Galatians 3 from verse 17 to 26. Please help me share the video and invite your friends. Let them know that we are talking about what will benefit them today and how that they do not need to put themselves under slavery again because Jesus has bought freedom for us. They do not need to live by Ten Commandments and Jewish laws anymore because Jesus has bought freedom for us. So Galatians chapter 3, we'll read from verse 17. It's a little um, long, but I'm going to take it verse by verse. So Galatians 3, if anybody can hear me, could you just write what I said? I want to be sure that you, you heard me. Galatians 3, verse 17. So, and if you have your Bibles open already, then we can read. Charles Emmanuel Belema Lamina, can anybody hear me? Okay. So Galatians 3, verse 17. I'm going to be reading from the Living Bible, although I also have my King James Bible here. So you can open any translation that you have, and let's read Galatians chapter 3 together. From verse 17. I read from the, the Living Bible. Can anybody hear me? I want to be sure that you can hear me. You know, most times when I tell we are no longer living under the era of Ten Commandments and Jewish laws. When I, when I tell them that, okay, thank you, Rhoda, you can hear me, Galatians 3, 17 to 26. God bless you. So get your Bibles closed, open any translation you want, and let's look at the Bible together. I said I'm going to read from the Living Bible. Although I also have King James here. I know most people are used to King James. Now, when I tell people that we are no longer under the law system, the, the commandments and the Jewish laws, they begin to argue. Christians begin to argue. And they tell you that even though you have faith in Jesus, you must obey the commandments. And if you don't obey the commandments, you will not go to heaven. Anytime I raise this issue, people argue with me. Just the way they argued with Apostle Paul in his time. And they say, are you not saying that we should not obey the commandments? Are you not saying that we, we can still go to heaven? Without obeying Ten Commandments? That's what they ask, what they say. But let's see what the Bible says. I'm not going to be the one speaking today. Let's see. Now, Galatians, I said Galatians 3. I'm going to read from verse 17. Here is what I am trying to say. God's promise to save true faith. And God wrote this promise down and signed it. Take note. There was a promise that God gave unto Abraham that the whole world will be saved by faith. I mentioned this when I talked about the bond woman yesterday. So God gave a promise to Abraham that in Isaac, the whole world will be saved. Now here, the Bible is saying that that promise that God made unto Abraham that promise to save through faith, not through commandments, but to save through faith. God wrote the promise and signed it. And because God signed it, God stamped it, that promise cannot be cancelled or changed. Pay attention. That promise to save through faith cannot be cancelled. Nothing can cancel it. So that promise cannot be cancelled 430 years later, when God gave the Ten Commandments. What is Apostle Paul saying? Apostle Paul is saying, 
that even before God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses, he had already given a promise to Abraham. And the promise he gave to Abraham is that the whole world will be saved only by faith. Thank you, Akwedi Stephanie, for putting up the scripture there. God told Abraham, I'm going to save the whole world by faith. And when God made that promise to Abraham, God wrote it and signed it. And that promise cannot be cancelled. 430 years later, when God gave the commandment to Moses. So before there was ever a Ten Commandments, God had given a promise already to save by faith. So that Ten Commandments now cannot disannul, cannot annul the promise that God made. That Ten Commandments now cannot nullify the promise of God to save only by faith. So breaking the commandment or keeping the commandment cannot nullify the promise of God to save by faith. Now, Paul is saying to us that before Moses ever climbed Mount Sinai, God already spoke to Moses uh, to, 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 to Abraham 430 years before. And God said he will never change that covenant he made with Abraham. That is why I know that anybody who has faith in Christ Jesus, whether he's obeying Jewish laws, Ten Commandments or not, such a person is saved already. If the trumpet sounds today, such a person is going to heaven. Why? Because the promise God gave to Abraham was to save only through faith. And the law cannot disannul, cannot nullify that covenant that God made with Abraham. Ishmael cannot take the place of Isaac. Sleeping with Hagar, trying to help God to get to heaven, trying to help God to fulfill his promise to save us, will not save anybody. Abraham was trying to help God to give birth to the promised. And he gave birth to Ishmael. But God is saying that Ishmael is not the one through which I will save the world. Hagar, the bondwoman, the seed of Hagar, that slave child, is not. it is not through him I will save the world. I will save the world through the seed of Sarah, that is Isaac. And that seed of Sarah is only a picture of Jesus who was to come. And when God said that, God told Abraham that because of your faith, I'm calling you a righteous man. And God is saying to you and I today that that promise he made to Abraham applies to every one of us if we can have faith. So we only get salvation by faith, not by Ten Commandments. So the Ten Commandments cannot nullify the promise of God. And in fact, if you are living by Ten Commandments, you are simply a slave. If you are trying to be saved by obeying the commandment, by trying to, you know, walk like Hagar, Abraham did with Hagar, trying to help God to take you to heaven, you are a slave. And my topic today is saying, stop being a slave child because Jesus has bought freedom for us already. So that is what Galatians is saying. Let's continue reading that Galatians. Let's read. The next verse, I read, I read verse 17 already. Now pay attention, verse 18. If obeying those laws, those commandments, could save us, then it is obvious that this would be a different way of gaining God's favor than the way Abraham got it. So how did Abraham get God's favor? How was Abraham justified? For he simply accepted God's promise. What is God's promise? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him 
will not perish. Not whoever, not whoever obey ten commandments, not whoever obey Jewish law, but whoever believes, whoever has faith in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So Abraham got his promise fulfilled by faith in Christ Jesus. Isaac came as a result of faith. And so the Bible is saying that if the law could save, then that is a different thing. It is strange because that was not how Abraham got saved. Abraham got saved only by simply accepting God's promise. He was not trying to obey commandments because there were no commandments even in his time. But the Bible said even the commandment that came 430 years later cannot nullify the promise that God gave to Abraham. Now look at verse 19. Because somebody will say that, ah, are you saying that we should no longer obey the commandments? Are you saying that if I don't obey the commandments, I will still go to heaven? I will not be the one to say it. You have seen it already in the Bible where we read. You become a slave when you go back to the commandment system and try to keep it. You become a slave. Thank you everyone for sharing the video. Gift blessing, thank you for sharing and you're welcome. Okay, Kechi, you're welcome. MC Denks, you're welcome. Patrick, you're welcome. God bless you. So now let's look at the purpose of the law. Why did God give us the law in the first place? If God had already promised Abraham that he was going to save the world through faith, why then did he give the law to Moses? Verse 19. Well, then, why were the laws given? They were added after the promise was given. To show men how guilty they are of breaking God's laws. So, God gave the law to show man how guilty man was. Now, I have a question here. Let me read it. So, is the commandment of God overruled? Well, God himself put an end to the system of law. You will see it here. Let's continue where we're reading. To answer that question, you will see it. The same God who gave the laws had already given a promise before. And he's saying that the law cannot nullify his promise. So that means that the promise is what God is looking at, not the laws. So I will show you why God gave the laws and what happened to the laws. Okay? So let's look at that verse, verse um, we're in verse 19. So the, law were, the, the laws were added to show man how guilty man is. The law was brought to show us that we are not obeying, that we are breaking God's laws. Now pay attention to the next line. But this system of law was to last only until the coming of Christ. Hallelujah. The system of law was to last only until the coming of Christ. If you have King James, verse 19 of King James said that it was added because of transgression until the seed should come. Who is the seed that God promised? Jesus Christ. So the laws were only to last until the seed come, who is Jesus. So God had already promised that a seed was going to come. So the law was only to last until the seed came. Just the way it happened in the time of Abraham, Ishmael only remained in that house until Isaac was given birth to. When Isaac was circumcised, and after Isaac was weaned, Ishmael was driven away. Ishmael and the mother, Hagar, they were cast out. Because I told you yesterday that Hagar and Ishmael represent the law system. And so they were cast out. So the Bible is saying here that the law system was only to last until the seed come. Who is Jesus? So now that Jesus has come, we are no longer under the system of laws again. 
I hope I answered that question already. The question that said, so ha the commandment of God, have they been overruled? Where we read now just answered that question. And where we read now said that the commandments, the system of laws, the Jewish laws, everything that happened on Mount Sinai was supposed to last only until the seed, the child of promise, who is Jesus Christ, came into the scene. And now Jesus Christ has come into the scene and we don't have any business with the law again. So the law has been fulfilled already. Because Jesus said, I did not come to abolish the law, I came to fulfill it. What did the, what did the Bible say? That the law was only to last until Jesus comes. And Jesus has come. And so the law has been fulfilled. So we don't have any business with the law again. We don't have any business with the Ten Commandments again. Any attempt to go back to the Ten Commandments is to go into slavery. Is to make yourself a slave child. Is to reject the freedom that God has bought for us and then to go and become a slave. So don't become a slave. That's what I'm talking about today. Don't go back to the Jewish system again, to the laws again, because they were to last only until the seed come and the seed has come already. I hope you are seeing that in your Bible. I want us to continue. I, I stopped at um, what verse now? I stopped at verse 19. So, but this system of law was to last only until the coming of Christ, the child to whom God's promise was made. And there, there is this further difference. God gave his laws to angels to give to Moses. Who then gave them to the people? In other words, Moses did not see God face to face. Moses did not receive the laws from God direct. It was an angel who gave the laws to Moses. To give to the children of Israel. So the children of Israel did not have one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. They did not even have one-on-one -on -one relationship with the angels. They only received the commandment from Moses. And Moses himself did not receive it from God. He received it from an angel. Look at verse 20. But when God gave the promise to Abraham, verse 20, when God gave the promise to Abraham, he did it by himself alone, without angels or Moses as a go-between. So you see, the promise of God to save by faith was a direct contact between man and God. God did not need a mediator. God did not need an angel to come in between. God did not need a Moses to come in between. God had one-on-one -on -one relationship with humans when he gave the promise to Abraham. That is why the law cannot nullify the promise. And the promise is to save by faith. Now, look at verse 21. Well then, are God's laws and God's promises against each other? Of course not. If we could be saved by his laws, then God would not have had to give us a different way to get out of the grip of sin. Did you see that? If the law could stop people from sinning, if the law could save, if the law could justify, if the law could give righteousness, God would not have brought a different way to save us from the grip of sin. God would not have brought a different way to give us eternal life. When they tell you about the laws in church, when they tell you to keep the commandments in church, they are trying to prevent you from sin. But the Bible is saying that the law does not have the power to prevent you from sin. The law only reveals that you are a sinner. So, if the law could save, 
if the law is what gives salvation, then Apostle Paul would not have said that going back to the law makes you a slave. He would not have told us that Christ has set us free, has bought freedom for us already. So going back to the law system makes you a slave child because the Ten Commandments and the laws make you a slave. They cannot save you from sin. They only make you a slave like Ishmael and Hagar. Let's go ahead. Let's read the next verse now. Now pay attention to the next verse. I want to read. Now, the Bible says that we are all prisoners to sin. All of us. All of us are prisoners. Even in the time of the, of the Jewish people, even though they had all the law, the Bible is still saying that the whole world is under sin. So if the law could save from sin, how come the Bible is saying that we are all prisoners to sin? So it is obvious that going to obey the law, trying to obey the law to be saved, does not make you save. It only makes you a slave. Now, what is the way out? The only way out is through faith in Jesus Christ. The way of escape is open to all who believe in Jesus. So you see? So it, what it means, what Paul is saying here, that the only way to be saved is to have faith in Jesus. Now, Ten Commandments can save, but shouldn't be disobeyed. So abiding to the Ten Commandments only is in the past, but not neglecting it outrightly. Well, what I would say to you is, if you are obeying the Ten Commandments with the mindset that it will take you to heaven, or that it will save you, I'm sorry to disappoint you tonight, the Bible is saying, that nobody can be saved by keeping the commandments. The commandments are good, but they cannot save. The commandments are good, but any attempt to be justified by them makes us slaves. You see, so this, what we're reading now, is all over the Bible, it's scattered all over the Bible. Apostle Paul wrote it over and over again that nobody can be justified by the law, that nobody can be saved by the law. It was repeated again and again. And I wanted to sit down and, and, and think for, for, for a while. If the law could save, the Jews had the law, the Jews had the Ten Commandments, why then did Jesus come? If the law could save, if obeying the law could save people, why did Jesus come? He wouldn't have come at all. Then all the Jews would have been saved. But I told you yesterday that even the Jews, they are still under bondage up till today. If they don't accept Jesus, they are still children of the slave of the slave woman. I'm, I'm going to tell you, maybe tomorrow, I'm going to show you that the Ten Commandments were never meant for the Gentiles. We, they were, that's what the Bible called them, the Jewish laws. They were never meant for you and I. They were for the Jews alone. So, it is not about us picking a part of the Bible that suits us. No, this is the gospel of Jesus. This is what Apostle Paul is saying. And it is all over. I'm going, to, I'm going to continue this topic maybe tomorrow or next. To show you that it is all over the scripture. And I'm going to show you other verses. To prove to you that the law was never meant for us. It was for the Jews alone. Okay? Now, let's continue. Verse 23. Until Christ came, we were guarded by the law. You see? So until Christ came, we were guarded by the law. The law was our schoolmaster. Until Christ came. So we, we were only given, not we now, the Jews, were only given the law to guide them until Christ come. 
So King James said the law was our schoolmaster to lead us to Christ. And now that Christ has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. That is King James. Can anybody see that? That now that Christ has come, we are no longer a schoolmaster. We are no longer under a schoolmaster. Okay. I'm, I'm going to answer your question. Somebody is asking, should the Ten Commandments be obeyed even though it doesn't save? Now, I'm going to tell you, I'll, 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 do, a, I'll do a series, I'll do a topic on the commandment that you need to obey. All the commandments are summed up in one commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. So all of those commandments, all of those ten commandments have been summed up in one. Now it is faith that walketh by love. Even the ten commandments, even if we say we should obey them, we don't obey them, we still break them. That is the exact reason why Jesus came. Because the Jews, the, the Jews themselves could not obey it. The Pharisees could not obey it. The teachers of the law could not obey it. That is why Christ came. So, if Christ is setting us free from that bondage, why should we want to go back again to that system? Now that Christ has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. The law was only a schoolmaster. Now, look at verse 24. Let me put it in another way. The Jewish laws were our teacher and guide until Christ came to give us right standing with God through our faith. So, the Jewish law were only to guide us to Christ. But now that Christ has come, verse 25, we don't need those laws any longer to guide us and lead us to him. I hope this answers your question. Verse 25, now that Christ has come, we don't need those laws anymore to lead us to him. Did you see that in your Bible, verse 25? Now that Christ has come, we don't need those laws anymore. This is the word of God. Any attempt to go and be, you know, trying to live by the law system is simply a show of pride. It's simply arrogance. It is saying that I don't believe that faith has joined me. So I want to justify myself by obeying the commandments. I hope that is clear enough tonight. So now all of us are children of God by faith. Any attempt to obey the law will make us slave children. We become children of Hagar. We become Ishmael. Let's look at another Bible verse. Bible verse to attest to what, what I'm saying. Galatians chapter 2, verse 4 to 5. So please stop being a slave. Galatians chapter 2, verse 4 to 5. Okay. Galatians chapter 2. Verse 4 to 5. Please help me share the video and get more people to come. You know, we, we, we have been so used to the Ten Commandments. They, they've taught us so much of it. I mean, when I was growing up in church, I heard so much about the Ten Commandments. And now it is difficult to even preach the gospel of Jesus. It is difficult to tell people now that faith in Christ alone can save them. Why? Because we have been so used to the law system. 
And the, the funny part is that the law system was never meant for Gentiles at all. It was only for the Jews. The law system was not meant for us at all. But we who were Gentiles are not carrying the Ten Commandments on our head and we are saying we must obey them. Even the Jews could not obey them. So get chapter 2, verse 4, to 5. Now somebody just asked me, does it mean that we... We we don't we don't need to obey the laws the, the commandments again. Can't we combine the faith and the commandment together? No, you cannot combine them. You cannot put a new wine in an old skin bottle. A little living will live in the whole lump. So you cannot combine them. That is why Isaac and Ishmael could not stay together. One has to leave. Now let's look at Galatians chapter 2 from verse 4. Now, Apostle Paul had gone to Jerusalem to, to meet with his disciples. And he went with Titus and some of the Jewish people who got born again as Christians were saying that even though we are now Christians, Everybody who accepts Jesus Christ must be circumcised and obey the Jewish laws or else they are not saved. So they were trying to combine faith in Jesus Christ with the Jewish law. And they were asking Titus to, you know, to, to, to be circumcised. And let's see what Apostle Paul said concerning that. Verse 4. Even that question wouldn't have come up except for some so-called Christians there, false ones, really. For any Christian who is telling you to go and obey Ten Commandments, Apostle Paul said he's a false Christian. So these false Christians, they came to spy on us and see what freedom we enjoyed in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. They came to look at us to see the freedom that Jesus has bought for us. They came to see whether we obey the Jewish laws or not. You see? That is what church people are doing today. They are looking everywhere to see whether people are obeying Jewish laws, obeying, obeying Ten Commandments or not. So, th these Christians who claim to have faith in Jesus came to spy on Apostle Paul and on Titus to see if they were obeying the Jewish laws. Apostle Paul said, they tried to get us all tied up in their rules like slaves in chains you see they tried to enslave us again they came to look whether we were circumcised or whether we were obeying the jewish laws they came to spy on the freedom that we have they tried to make to put us in chains again they, they tried to make us look like hagar and ishmael again that were cast out they came to spy on our freedom now look at verse 5 look at what apostle paul said but we did not listen to them for a single moment. For we did not want to confuse you into thinking that salvation can be earned by being circumcised and by obeying Jewish laws. You see, Paul did not listen to them at all because he didn't want to confuse people that were there to make them start thinking that salvation can be earned by being circumcised and by obeying the Jewish laws. I hope that is clear enough. I hope that portrays the point. So let nobody come and spy on you, whether you are obeying Ten Commandments or not. We all know that nobody on the face of the earth has been able to obey all the commandments. All of those religious, you know, facade that you see is only deception and pretense. Nobody can obey all the commandments. And you see, the danger of trying to live by the commandments is this. If you obey one commandment and you break the rest, or if you obey all the commandments and you break one, that one that you have broken nullifies all the ones you have obeyed. That is why trying to obey the commandments will make you a sinner. Why? Because even if you obey one, what about the remaining nine? Even if you obey nine, what about that one that you cannot obey? Breaking that one breaks everything. 
So why should you attempt such a system? Why should you go to, you know, to that lost system, that impossible road, when you have been given freedom already? So stand firm now in the freedom that Christ has given to you. Now, see that Galatians chapter 2, move down to verse 14, and, and verse 14 to verse 16. Let's see again as Paul, you know, begins to talk more about the Jewish law and the freedom that God has given to us. Let's look at verse 14 of that um, Galatians chapter 2. So I'm begging you today, stop being a slave child. Any attempt to obey the commandments makes you a slave. And if you break one, you have broken all. Now, look at what happened from verse 14. Now, you see, when Peter came to Antioch, he was eating with some Gentiles. But as soon as he saw some Jews, the people who are trying to live by the law, as soon as he saw them, he withdrew himself from the Gentiles. Pretense came. That is what happened under the commandment system. People pretend. People live their life like Pharisees. So, look at what happened in verse 14. When I saw what was happening, this Apostle Paul is talking now, Apostle Paul even rebuked Peter for trying to, 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 to live by the commandments and to live in that pretense. When I saw what was happening and that they weren't being honest about what they really believed and weren't following the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter in front of all, all the others, Though you are a Jew by birth, you have long since discarded the Jewish laws. You see? Even the Jews, even Peter who is a Jew and Apostle Paul, they all of them have discarded the Jewish laws. They have discarded the commandment system. So why should you be obeying what does not belong to you in the first place? I told you the Jewish law is only for the Jews and even the Jews themselves, they have discarded the Jewish laws. So why all of a sudden are you trying to make these Gentiles obey them? Did you see that in your Bible? This is the living Bible. If we who were Jews, we have discarded the Jewish laws, why are we trying to make Gentiles obey them? Now, verse 15. You and I are Jews by birth, not mere Gentile sinners. Verse 16. Pay attention to verse 16, I beg you. And yet, we Jewish Christians know very well that we cannot become right with God by obeying our Jewish laws, but only by faith in Jesus Christ to take away our sins. Did you see that? That we Jewish Christians know that our Ten Commandments and our Jewish laws cannot save us, but only faith in Jesus Christ to take away our sins can save us. And so we too, Apostle Paul is speaking, and so we too have trusted Jesus Christ that we might be accepted by God because of faith and not because we have obeyed the Jewish laws. For no one will ever be saved by obeying them. No one will ever have eternal life by obeying the commandments. No one will ever be justified by the law. So even the Jews themselves, he said, and so we too, we who are Jews, we are throwing away the commandments, we are discarding the commandments, and we are living by faith in Jesus. We are trusting in Jesus so that we can be saved also the way the Gentiles are being saved by faith. So if the Jews are coming to embrace faith, to be saved like Gentiles, why should you, a Gentile now, say you want to go and be obeying Ten Commandments? Tell me why. Why should you enslave yourself again? I give you the, the last Bible verse for today as I begin to round off. Galatians chapter 4, verse 9 to 11. Still on that Galatians chapter 4. Okay, I think I already read that. Okay, don't worry. I think I think we, 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 read, we read that already. That was I, the story about, you know, Peter trying to pretend. So, the Bible is simply saying that you and I do not need to live by the, the, the Jewish law system because nobody will be saved by that system. Any attempt to get salvation by the Jewish law 
makes you a slave. The Jews could not keep the laws. And you cannot keep it also. I assure you, I bet you, you cannot. I mean, I will stake my life for this. You cannot obey the commandments. I will stake anything. You don't have what it takes to obey all the commandments. Nobody ever did. And you, you also cannot. So any attempt to claim that you're obeying the commandments is just a lie. Any attempt to say that, oh, I'm obeying the commandments, you are living in deception. And you are only making yourself a slave. Because the Bible says, God has concluded that the whole world is under sin, both Jews and Gentiles together. So if the law could save from sin, if people could obey the law, why would God be saying that the whole world is under, is under sin, is under the grip of sin? He would have known that the Jews were obeying the law, so they should be righteous. But none of them was righteous. There is none righteous. No, not one. Why? Because nobody could keep the laws. The law only makes you a slave. So my heart cry to you today is that you should stop being a slave and enjoy the freedom that Jesus has bought for you already. No wonder Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 says, Stand firm in the liberty. I, I wish we could read that. Let, 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 let me round off with that. Galatians chapter 5 from verse 1. Let me round off with that. If you have your Bible, please, Galatians chapter 5. From verse 1. I would love to read it from the Living Bible. If you have King James, it's good. You can read it from there. Any translation you have, message, amplified, get all of them, open all of them. And you will see what Paul is saying. Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to read from verse 1. Now from, from King James, it says, Stand first, stand fast, therefore, in the freedom, in the liberty, wherewith Christ has made you whole. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What is the yoke of bondage? The commandments, the Jewish laws. You see? You see, let me read it from the Living Bible. So Christ has made us free. Now make sure that you stay free. And don't get all tied up again in the chains of slavery to Jewish law. You see that? Don't get tied up again. Stand fast in the liberty. Remain free. Be like Isaac. Don't become an Ishmael. You will be cast out if you do. If you become a slave child, you will be cast out. Now look at verse 2. Listen to me, for this is serious. If you are counting on circumcision and keeping the Jewish laws to make you right with God, then Christ cannot save you. Any attempt to go and obey the commandments to be saved, you are simply saying to Christ that he should not save you. And he will not save you. So if you want to go and, you know, keep commandments to be saved, good for you. Christ cannot save you if you are trying to obey the commandments. Verse 3. I will say it again. Anyone trying to find favor with God by being circumcised must always obey every other Jewish law or perish. Christ is useless to you if you are counting on clearing your debt to God by keeping those laws. You are lost from God's grace. So any attempt to go and obey the commandment makes you lost from God's grace. You are cast out like a slave child. You are cast out like the bond woman and her son. So I beg you tonight, Stop being a slave child and enjoy the freedom that God has given to you through faith in Christ Jesus. Please, if you have any comments or questions, don't forget to put them there. I'm going to answer them in the next um, video. Now, if you're listening to me 
and you are not born again. If you are listening to me and you have been in church for so many years, just doing religion and trying to obey commandments, and you know that you are not born again, you have not had faith in Jesus, this is an opportunity for you. Jesus is saving people if they have faith in him. He's justifying people in faith. So if you can just have faith in him today, he will forgive all your sins. He will cleanse you from all your iniquities. So if you are there and you want to surrender life to Jesus, you don't want to become a slave anymore to traditions, and you want to just believe in Jesus and be saved, then just say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. I know I no longer live the way I've been living. I know you can justify me. You can forgive all my sins if I believe in you. I believe in you today. I surrender my life to you today so that I will be justified by faith. Accept me today. If you pray that prayer with me, congratulations to you. You have been saved. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has saved you. Congratulations to you. Welcome to God's family. You are now a joint heir with Christ. You are now a son. You are no longer a slave child. And if you are born again and you've been trying to obey the commandments to go to heaven, I'm saying to you today that just focus on faith alone. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Don't go the way of the law because you will make yourself a sinner if you do that. Thank you everyone for coming. God bless you. I appreciate you for your comments, your questions, and for sharing the video. Do have a lovely evening. I hope to come to you tomorrow again. God bless you and go and enjoy your freedom in Christ. Bye-bye.